Good evening, everybody. The March 18th, 2024 legislative session of Anne Arundel County Council is called to order. Please ensure all phones and electronic devices are set to silence. We will now uh, stand for the invocation. Ms. Rodvian will lead. or simply focus our intentions for the purpose at hand. Let us be guided by wisdom and fairness to address the challenges brought before us. Let us find compassion to help the marginalized. Let us not only speak of justice, but act in just ways. Let us remember that what may appear to divide us will never be greater than those things that unite us. Let us seek to govern in the image of love as love holds the wisest answers. Amen. And at this time, I would like to invite the um, River Hawk District Scouts um, to uh, lead us in the pledge. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Thank you. Everyone can be seated. We now have a brief presentation from the River Hawk District Scouts. You have the floor. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Natalie Brady. I attend South River High School and am an Eagle Scout from Troop 2018, chartered to American Legion Post 226 in Mayo. There's a saying that goes, the only problem with scouting is that they meet in church basements and camp in the woods. Nobody sees them. Did you know that the scouting program is one of the largest youth serving organizations in Anne Arundel County? New this year, we wanted to provide county leadership with an update on the scouting program in Anne Arundel County for 2023 and to share some positive impact that scouting has on our community. Of my commitments throughout the years, scouts has impacted my life like no other. My years of scouting have allowed me to develop into the leader I am today. Scouts taught me the importance of giving back to my community and enabled me to explore countless interests through the extensive array of merit badges. Scouts put me in a position to lead my peers, whether it was through organizing fellow scouts in the completion of my Eagle Project or serving as senior patrol leader of my troop. I became comfortable in my skin and gained the confidence to lead responsibly and passionately. This year, we'd like to present the county with our annual report card on scouting to share a few accomplishments of scouts in Anne Arundel County. Last year, 2,904 youth participated in the scouting program, which was comprised of 100 packs and troops chartered by local churches and community organizations. 2,384 scouting adult leaders serve the youth of Anne Arundel County, providing a high quality scouting program every week. Scouting's annual Scouting for Food drive collected over 24,600 pounds of food that stayed here in Anne Arundel County through distribution to local food banks and pantries. Between the Scouting for Food drive and other good turns in our communities, Scouts participated in 16,804 hours of community service last year. Further, Scouts earned over 5,100 merit badges, helping them learn new and valuable skills that will stay with them for the rest of their lives. In 2023, 124 scouts earned the prestigious rank of Eagle Scout, contributing an impressive $155,520 worth of value added to their local communities through their Eagle Scout projects. Scouting has been, an in, has been instrumental in shaping me into a more effective leader, equipping me with invaluable skills and fostering a sense of responsibility to our community. I appreciate your interest and support in the scouting program in Anne Arundel County and welcome your support in its continued success across Central Maryland. If you want to learn more, feel free to pick up an information card in the lobby. Thank you. Thank you very much. This has been a pleasure to have you all here with us tonight. You're the shining example of positive uh, activity for youth uh, in our county. So thank you for being here. And I hope you enjoy part of the meeting. And I would recommend not staying for the entire meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Secretary, please uh, read the ethics statement. 
The ethics, the ethics Commission has asked that I advise you that under certain circumstances, members of the public may qualify as lobbyists when they testify before the County Council. If so, the law requires that certain information be filed with the Ethics Commission. The Chair of the Ethics Commission has asked that those who wish to testify in any form review the general information on lobbying sheet located on the Ethics website under Forms and Publications. If there are any questions about lobbying requirements, please contact the Ethics Commission at 410-222-4413. Thank you. Before we open the invitation to audience and hear from the public, I would like to remind everyone in, the, in attendance, whether testifying or as a member of the audience, we must maintain decorum at all times within these chambers. We will now open the, our invitation to audience. This is an opportunity to speak briefly on any subject not included in the printed agenda. Madam Secretary, did we receive any testimony through the online testimony tool? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the council, there were two submissions. Uh, the count, everybody here on the council received a full copy. There is a summary that is posted on the website and those full copies will be added to the record as well. Thank you. We do not have anyone signed up in advance for the invitation to audience portion of our meeting. If there's anyone else here who wishes to speak, please come up to the table, state your name, address, and topic before making your remarks. Remarks will be limited to two minutes. Thank you, you may proceed. Uh, my name is Kate Fox. I live in Davidsonville, Maryland, and I'm chair of the GAN Legislative Committee. Christina Pompa noted in her presentation on the region plans at the February work session that the biggest issue brought up in the SAC meetings for both regions two and seven was traffic congestion. The Center for the Study of Local Issues at the Community College consistently finds that there's in their surveys that county residents- Ms. Fox? Yes? So both both two and seven are on the agenda tonight. I'm not tonight. talking about them specifically. I'm just mentioning them in passing, if that's okay. Okay, two minutes. Okay. Um, the Center for the Study of Local Issues at the Community College consistently finds in their surveys that the county residents don't want any more development. Why is this? Our guess is that more development increases already bad traffic congestion throughout the county. How has this happened? One factor may be the current APF test for roads has been inadequate for a long time. The reports from the committee studying the APF test for roads were submitted to the Administration for Legislation Development in early November 2023. When will we see that legislation? How can we allow new denser development called for in the region plans, town center master plans, and other legislation if we do not have an up-to-date test for adequate roads? Another factor may be the lack of transit options and transit hubs. The 2019 Functional Transportation Master Plan, which is based on the 20, 2009 GDP, has not been updated since Plan 2040 passed two years ago. For the most part, it is focused on vehicles. It does not have a single goal for transit, although it does have recommendations around transit services. These recommendations were incorporated in Plan 2040. A draft transit development plan based on this functional master plan notes that the existing bus routes in the county have a lower user rate, but that 70% of respondents to their survey were unaware of the county transit services. One reason for this disconnect is the marketing of transit services and existing smartphone app. Marketing right now is through a web page, distribution of brochures and public presentations at county senior centers and nutrition sites. There's no use of print and TV or radio media or targeted social media to advertise transit service. Finally, this draft plan Thank you, Ms. Fox. All right, thank you. Thank you. Ms. Johnson. Julie Johnson, PO Box 6634, Annapolis, Maryland. Um, my main topic tonight is that I would really like to emphasize the importance of preserving the uh, the bird sanctuary that we, uh, is named or sometimes called the Weems Creek um, Bird Sanctuary. But this goes back even before I came to Annapolis, so you know that goes way back. And um, it also relates to when they built Route 50. Some of you know and understand that at the time they built Route 50 extending from D.C. to uh, to the beach, um, this you know the, our community, which includes um, Wellsview Village, the one that's called Weems Creek, and the, the third, which is called um, Shoot Gardens Garden Farms, 
Um, I'm trying to think, I'm, I'm thinking George T. Melvin because George T. Melvin was the man who bought the land, hired the surveyor, laid it out, sold the properties, and so on and so forth. But he, you know, he laid out a really effective, you know, long-lasting community. Um, and the people, you know, it was so good that there are families who have been there for three generations. Um, and I guess, come to think of it, my family's getting to that point, too. Um, but, not in, but not as long as those. You know, they started in 1881. Um, but the importance about the birds is that when they, they came along Route 50, they came very close to Wings Creek. But they couldn't get too close because they didn't want the highway to fall in. So, um, and there had already been a lot of people, and particularly from that generation, people were bird watchers. People knew all ab about birds uh, for a multitude of reasons, not merely the joy of watching them or listening them to the, the, them sing, but harvesting the, you know, Thanksgiving dinner and a lot of other meals also. Um, because I, tr I trust that most of you are aware that we are on the Atlantic Flyway. And so, um, one of the things that worries me. No. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Do I get to tell you what worries me? Nope. No. Next time. Uh, Sir? Okay. Um, my name is Gary Muller from uh, Jessup, Maryland. Um, I've been reading a, a plan, and the plan was a small area plan from 2004 for Jessup, Maryland City. And what I've noticed is you all have a lot of unfinished business. So in that plan, and the reason for a plan is to come up with what you're going to do, what do you, how you're going to take and implement the recommendations that 13 people took a lot of time, and the county spent a lot of time putting that plan together. And what we're finding is very little things have been implemented by the council. Uh, for example, uh, Jessup, one of the things that was recommended was to acquire the property between the Jessup Community Hall and the school. It's needed not only for overflow parking for the school, but also when the Jessup Improvement Association holds events. That was recommended. Another recommendation was the, to develop a 20 or 30 acre property the school system no longer needs into a passive park. That's another example of, of, of a recommendation that was made that was very uh, well supported in the Jessup community back 20 years ago. So those are th some things. I, I have an email I'm going to send to you all listing all the things that are on your to-do list. And we hope that, uh, you know, just like we hear that there's all kinds of land being acquired in South County, it's like how about spreading the, the, uh, the wealth a little bit in, in West County and, and do these things that would increase the quality of life in our community and things that uh, uh, people that um, worked on that 20 years ago would like to see. So... Um, got a little work coming, and hopefully you can do that, because if you're going to pass another plan, where's the credibility of these plans if you don't do anything with it, if it just sits on a shelf like the plan from Jessup, Maryland City in 2004 did? Thank you, sir. The invitation to audience is now closed. Is there any item any council member would like to place on the agenda? Seeing no movement here, may I have a motion that the partial reading of any bill, resolution, amendment to a bill or resolution, or minutes constitutes the reading of the whole? Rod being so moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Madam Secretary, please read the minutes of March 4th, 2024. Minutes of March 4th, 2024. The County Council meeting was called to order by Chair Pickard at 7 p.m. It was opened with the invocation given by Ms. Fiedler and was followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. The meeting was held in the County Council Chambers in Annapolis, Maryland. Madam Secretary, um, oh, may I have a motion to approve the minutes of March 4th, 2024? Rod being so moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes carry. The motion carries. The minutes of March 4th, 2024 stand approved as read. Madam Secretary, please read the titles of the bills to be introduced this evening. 
Bill number 2124, an ordinance concerning general provisions, equity and human rights, boards, commissions and similar bodies, Human Relations Commission. Bill number 2224, an ordinance concerning subdivision and development, adequate school facilities, school utilization chart. Bill number 2324, an ordinance concerning pensions, interplan transfers, deputy police chief. Thank you. Madam Secretary, please read the titles of the resolutions to be introduced this evening. Resolution number 924, resolution confirming appointment of a member of the Anne Arundel County Agricultural Preservation Advisory Board. Okay, Madam Secretary, please read the title of bill number 1-24. Bill number 124, an ordinance concerning public safety, animal care and control, potentially dangerous, dangerous and vicious animals. This is an administration bill. I'll let y'all assemble and you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Ethan Hunt for the administration. With me at the table, I have Captain Jeff Adams from the Police Department and Kelly Kenny from the Office of Law. Uh, we've discussed this bill numerous times at prior hearings um, and the work session um, in February, I believe, or might have been January, actually. Um, but this bill, as we discussed before, amends the criteria for designating animals as potentially dangerous, dangerous, or vicious, establishes the process for reconsideration of an order uh, authorizes the police department's animal care and control agency to waive redemption, adoption, spay and neuter fees and amends uh, certain license fees in second and subsequent years and requires owners to pay specified costs associated with their care. Um, I know there are some amendments to discuss, so I'll leave it at that and we're happy to answer any questions. Is there any discussion before we open the public hearing? Seeing none, we'll now open the public hearing on bill number one. Dash 24, Madam Secretary, did we receive any testimony through the online testimony tool? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, members of the council, there was one submission. Uh, the council got a full copy of that. It is included in a summary that is posted online and it will be added to the meeting record. Thank you. We do have speakers signed up in advance. Um, I will call them up. Um, a reminder to those, um, our speakers giving testimony, you have two minutes and please state your name and address for the record. Um, any remarks beyond the two minutes, you're welcome to uh, share additional thoughts through our online testimony tool. Can we, is Sandra Andrulis, Jennifer Brienza, Jacqueline Kyle, Chris Weinstein, and Linda Mazur? Those are five speakers who have signed up in advance. We do have six seats. If there's anyone in the audience that wishes to speak, you can come up and, in addition, keep this rolling. Ms. Andrulis? Well, my name is Dr. Sandra Andrulis. I've been a veterinarian for over 21 years, um, worked in shelter medicine for 18 years, uh, former chief of Baltimore County Animal Services, and I've served on the Animal Welfare Council for the last two years. Um, tonight, I had, I had intended to speak on the reconsideration part of this bill and describe to you what an appropriate change in mitigating circumstances could be in order to qualify for a reconsideration hearing to address the conditions of the order. However, tonight there is an amendment that would allow the designation of a dangerous animal to also be reconsidered, and I strongly oppose this amendment, number 15, um, along with the other amendments which were added at the 11th hour, amendments 12, 13, 14. I especially disagree with the assertion that any recognized expert, which is a, a vague label, could overturn a previous designation of a dangerous dog. Um, a veterinary behaviorist, if you uh, don't know, is a veterinarian that's gone to, school, to college for four years, got, done a residency uh, for four years, vet school for four years, and passed the boards. Uh, there are only about 50 veterinary board certified behaviorists in the country. So um, just getting any person to say that they're an expert is, is really not gonna be helpful and potentially harmful. Um, 
I would ask that we please split the bill and vote tonight on the cruelty section so that these animals do not suffer another day. And please pass the following sections. Uh, the cruelty section, redemption of impounded animals, and adopted animals spaying and neutering. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Brianza? Hi. <clears throat> My name is Jennifer Brianza. I serve on the Animal Matters Commission, but tonight I'm here again as a private citizen, and I want, also want to address the amendments being put forth tonight. Um, I'm a little disappointed that after 10 weeks of discussion on this bill, we're here as... Um, the doctor just said at the 11th hour with some amendments making very broad and sweeping changes without, um, without even so much as a discussion or you know, just a courtesy heads up to receive any input from all of the stakeholder agencies. I understand that the council has been operating without legislative council for some time and now there's some catch up to be done. As an attorney, um, I certainly appreciate the work that was, I see in the amendments to clean up and clarify the statute. Um, but I also see some pretty big substantive changes, such as introducing for the first time uh, this session the ability to request a designation modification, and that's something that had not previously been supported by any of the stakeholder agencies. Um, I'm hoping that the lack of input from the stakeholders was simply unfortunate timing. However, since there is only three weeks and one more council meeting left before this legislation expires, I would ask that the council either table these new amendments for introduction sometime later in the future and pass the bill in its currently amended form or just table the bill altogether. Neither option is desirable, but I think for these amendments to be rushed through without being vetted by the appropriate agencies would clearly be irresponsible. Thank you. Ms. Kyle. Uh, Jackie Kyle, Glen Burnie. As the chair of the Animal Welfare Council, this process has been disappointing to me for the following reasons. The process has not been a collaborative one. We have given recommendations on the dangerous dog bill, section 12-4-402, to the county executive's office for two years, none of which have been incorporated into the proposed bill. Our recommendations have only been able to come through through the county council amendments. The shelter administrator of animal care and control is our liaison from the county. She is present during our meetings and deliberations on legislation. And if she was able to be at the table, she could have explained uh, the intent behind our recommended amendments. The drastic changes in the current amendments will not protect public safety, and we ask that you split this bill into a public safety bill which deals with vicious dogs, 12-4, 402, and 403, and table this portion until further discussion from the Animal Welfare Council can be done at our April 10th meeting. You should not delay passing the cost of care portion uh, of cruelty cases 12-4-901. These animals should not suffer another day in our shelter. Having them do so is a travesty. You should also pass the fee waivers 12-4-504 and the spay and neuter portion of this bill 12-4-912. Thank you for, for your consideration. Thank you. Ms. Weinstein. Hi. My name is Chris Weinstein, uh, 216 Long Point Road, Crownsville. I'm the president of Friends of Anne Arundel County Animal Care and Control, which is a 10-year-old nonprofit that was created by the shelter's volunteers to help improve and save the lives of pets in our county. We found out at midday today that four amendments were going to be proposed tonight that would radically revise the public safety portions of this bill. These are not simple tweaks, but major changes that we haven't had time to digest. These last minute proposals only heighten our ongoing concerns with the public safety portions of this bill. We continue to strongly support the cost of care and fee waiver sections of this legislation and we hope that you approve them. But we urge you to table the public safety portions of this bill until the many complex issues involved can be rewritten to best determine what pets cannot safely be part of our communities. Hopefully that effort will include input from the real experts in animal welfare such as the county's own, own animal care and control administrator, who has been notably absent from the public discussions of this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Mazur. Hi. Linda Mazur, 752 Dividing Creek Road, Arnold, Maryland. 
I'm the Vice Chair of the Animal Welfare Council. Tonight I ask that you table the amendments um, to the bill that deal with public safety and dangerous and vicious dogs. The amendments that have been put forth tonight have far-reaching implications for our public safety and need to be deliberated by our full Animal Welfare Council in order to give meaningful recommendations. For instance, amendment number 15, which would allow for the designation of the potentially dangerous dog or dangerous dog to be reconsidered. Has the county fully explored the type of liability that may be incurred when a dog that was once designated as potentially dangerous was reconsidered, taken off the registry, and then goes out and mauls a child? Also, with over 300 dogs currently on the dangerous dog registry, allowing each dog to have their designation reconsidered may overwhelm the current system of the hearings. Is the county planning to expand the Animal Matters Commission in order to handle the influx of retrying each case designation? Tonight's amendments are broad ranging in scope and should not be passed at this time. Stakeholder meetings that include members of the Animal Welfare Council and Animal Matters Commission should take place prior to passing these amendments. Please split the bill and allow the non-public safety part of the bill to be voted on tonight. Please give the animals that are victims of cruelty some relief now. Pass section 12-4-901 and sections 12-4-504 uh, and 12-4-912. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Ma'am? It's flashing. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Sandra Salvatore. Uh, I am a citizen lobbyist for the Humane Society and ASPCA for the last 20 years on Capitol Hill here in Annapolis. I'm also a dog owner and a foster for the last 20 years. I was just actually at the emergency vet last night for six hours with my one foster who's passing away of cancer and my other dog today who swallowed something he shouldn't have. I am agreeing with the members of of this table here about the secondary part. Um, as I've been here a couple times uh, testifying, my concern is that we're trying to, and our, I think the heart is in the right place, we're trying to put fixes to something that is fundamentally not sound. The, the core of the bill is not sound. And, and, and one of the things I focus on is that, for example, and the bill talks about the purpose of the bill is to revise the burdens of proof by repealing and reenacting with amendments section 124402, for example, but if um, it says, if you go to 124402, potentially dangerous and public safety threat. For example, A, public safety threat, section five, while at large chases or approaches a lawfully restrained domestic animal in an aggressive manner. Well, definitions in 124101 doesn't have a definition for aggressive manner, so who makes that determination? Well, according to 12441, the person, the individual that makes it in that uh, determination is Animal Control Agency, which is the chief of police, which doesn't seem to be someone who's probably the most experienced at being able to make a determination off a definition that's not even defined. So I'd like to, I, I, you know, I would love to table the bill and keep working on this with the experts involved, but I, I do agree that there are dogs that are being um, harmed in the system right now, so I would uh, defer to their recommendations about the, the care component, but uh, we need to fix, the, it's like a house with a foundation, it's a cracked foundation. Thank you. Thank you. This panel is dismissed. Is there anyone else in the audience wishing to speak at this time on bill number 1-24? Seeing no movement in the audience, the um, public hearing for Bill 1 24 is now closed. Uh, Madam Secretary, please read the title of Bill number 1 24. Bill number 124, an ordinance concerning public safety, animal care, and control, potentially dangerous, dangerous, and vicious animals. We do have amendments. Madam Secretary, please read amendment number 12. Amendment number 12, this amendment provides for the conditions under which an animal designated as potentially dangerous or dangerous may be maintained. This is both my and Ms. Hummer's amendment. Ms. Hummer, you have the floor. 
So before I begin that, I do want everyone out there to know that we've heard this has been a very challenging bill um, as we've tried to weigh everything that we've had coming back and forth and these amendments were some attempts by several of us to come up with the best thing. It's clear that we have not breached that best part yet. I think we all agree there's parts of this bill that um, everyone is believes need to pass sooner, as soon as possible, that would really be a benefit, but there are some others that we still have some um, disagreement on, on how we could handle it. Um, unfortunately, we're getting close to the end of the legislative process, and I have a question for um, Madam Parliamentarian. Is, that, is there a possibility to, uh, to hold this bill until later in the session and come up with an, um, a different kind of amendment? <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, I think I would. No, at, at the end of a, a end meeting. And of this meeting. So I could ask to do, to do an additional amendment instead. Oh. To, to hold what we're doing here and do an additional amendment at the end. So do I just make a motion to do that? A motion to, to table to a time certain. Um, at this time, just toward the, for the end of the meeting, this entire bill, the entire bill. Okay. okay. There's a motion on the table to table. <laughs> so a motion on the table to table the bill till the end, while um, we're we're going to be working to try to come up with. Um, Point of order, real quick, um, if I may. Mm -hmm. Does that include the other amendments that are the other three that we were getting ready to vote on as well? Yes, it does. Okay. So we're going to table, table the, the, the table the whole bill and the discussion and the amendments around it until the end of the meeting. To, so that it's later in the agenda. Is that correct? Is that am I saying that correctly? I'm sorry. So, point of information. Mm -hmm. Could you just clarify for the audience why we're doing this? I know why you're doing it, but I want to make sure because I see people looking confused and not right. sure why, and they may wonder why we're pushing it to the end. Exactly. So um, for what we're hearing is that there is a desire to perhaps split this bill um, and to address a certain portion of it tonight and to work on other portions later on. So we would, I would like us to see if we can um, craft some imp some um, an amendment that would allow us to do that so that we can um, pass tonight the portion that I think we all agree is the most urgent and the others that we can continue to work on to refine the language. So that is my intent. Madam Chair. I, I think I heard something that, well, oh, Madam Chair. No. Is, is there a second? To we're, we're, this is just an amendment to table this bill until the end of the meeting, and we'll take up this conversation again. Led better second. Okay. And now we're just going to take this conversation to the end of the meeting. Correct. I just I had a question though before yes. we vote. Mm -hmm. um, so the that's like within the next this meeting will probably last two or three hours. Is is it a real is it realistic to believe that we're going to be able to amend come up with amendments in that three hours while we're voting on the other legislation? Is it possible just withdraw the amendments, vote on the bill, and then modify the bill with future legislation with input from the, the, the constituents? There, there is the possibility for that, and that still could happen, but that would mean that even the, the provisions that um, I believe that we have agreement on about not letting um, certain animals languish at um, animal control for extended period of times, if we just end the bill and we have to reintroduce it, we're looking at another 90 days. No, I was saying pass the bill, but then come back with legislation to modify those parts that are that are questionable. That could be a possibility too. So, just, but. Well, I'm, I'm just. Great. I'm a Marine, I'm, just, I'm simple. I'm just, is it a red crayon or a yellow crayon, right? So just, <laughs> yeah. Just to well, the, mo the motion that has been moved and seconded is to table this bill until the end of the meeting, post uh, resolution number eight. So, and then we can Madam Secretary, further. we call the roll on that motion. Uh, Ms. Ledbetter. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Ms. Hummer. Aye. Mr. Volke. Aye. Ms. Fiedler. Nay. Ms. Rodvian. Aye. And Ms. Pickard. Aye. 
Six in the affirmative, one in the negative. The motion to table bill number 124 until the end of the meeting has been adopted. Madam Secretary, please read the title of bill number 4-24. Bill number 424, an ordinance concerning personnel. Mr. Hunt, this is a county executive bill. When your panel assembles, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Ethan Hunt for the administration. With me are Hannah Dyer from the county executive's office, uh, Lori Klossmeyer from the Office of Law, and Ann Bedowski from Jack and Jackie Atkinson from the Office of Personnel. Um, this bill as well has also been discussed at uh, several prior council hearings and the work session and I will turn it over to Ms. Dyer if she has any other comments. I just very briefly want to thank you all for your time over the past several weeks discussing this bill and our personnel processes and the findings and recommendations of the work group, the barriers that our departments face in navigating uh, our personnel system and having an efficient and effective process for recruitment and hiring. Um, so I know we have a handful of amendments, um, and I'll save the rest of my comments for later. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any discussion on Bill 4-24 before we open the public hearing? Mr. Smith? We will now open the public hearing on bill number 4-24. We do not have anyone signed up to speak in advance. If there is anyone here now who wishes to speak on bill number 4-24, please come up to the table and have a seat. When it is your turn, state your name and address for the record and remarks will be limited to two minutes. Seeing no movement in the audience, I'm gonna close the public hearing on bill number 4-24. Madam Secretary, please read the title of Bill Number 4-24. Bill Number 424, an ordinance concerning personnel. Madam Chair, can I also just state for the record that we did not have any submissions of online testimony? Thank you. I forgot to ask that. Thank you. We do have amendments. Um, is there any discussion before we get into amendments? I do want to take a minute to reciprocate the thank yous and the gratitude for the work that's been done in between this, the last meeting and this to come up with um, a comp compromise amendments that I think this council was all interested in. So thank you um, very much, uh, Ms. Dyer and team. Madam Secretary, please read amendment number eight. Amendment number eight. This amendment allows the personnel officer to assign current employees to vacant positions without county council approval if the pay grade for the vacant positions does not exceed the base of the employee's current pay grade by more than 10 percent the position remains in the same county department and the controller certifies that funds are available this is my amendment and miss hummer's amendment um it does what it madam secretary just said it does <laughs> is there a motion to adopt rod being so moved is there a second? second? Is there any discussion on amendment number eight? Would y'all like to, to comment, Ms. Dyer? Uh, so again, just we appreciate all the conversations. We're comfortable with um, where this amendment has landed uh, and we understand uh, the council's desire to have a little more oversight on those vacant reclassifications uh, over a certain threshold that have a fiscal impact. Is there any discussion, further discussion on amendment number eight? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, please call the roll on amendment number eight. Ms. Ledbetter. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Ms. Hummer. Aye. Mr. Volke. Aye. Ms. Fiedler. Aye. Ms. Radvian. Aye. And Ms. Pickard. Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Amendment number eight has been adopted. Madam Secretary, please read amendment number nine. Amendment number nine, this amendment requires county council approval if the base of a new pay grade that is assigned to an existing job classification exceeds the base of the current pay grade by more than 10%. This amendment also says what it says, <laughs> what you just said it does. This is sponsored by Ms., uh, myself and Ms. Hummer. Would the administration like to comment on amendment number nine? So just again, we appreciate the collaboration and getting to this, am this amendment. Um, and we are, we are comfortable with the position that it's in. Is there a motion to adopt? Rod Van, so moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion on amendment number nine? 
Seeing none, Madam Secretary, please call the roll on amendment number nine. Ms. Ledbetter. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Ms. Hummer. Aye. Mr. Volke. Aye. Ms. Fiedler. Aye. Ms. Radvian. Aye. And Ms. Pickard. Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Uh, amendment number nine has been adopted. Madam Secretary, please read amendment number 10. Amendment number 10. This amendment requires a quarterly report from the personnel officer to the county council on changes to the classification plan. Thank you again. This amendment says exactly what Madam Secretary um, said. This is my amendment and Ms. Hummers. Is there a motion to adopt? God being so moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, does the administration have any comments? So again, uh, we're comfortable with where this amendment landed and understand uh, the desire to have more frequent communication throughout the year on the changes made. Is there any discussion on amendment number 10? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, please call the roll on amendment number 10. Ms. Ledbetter. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Ms. Hummer. Aye. Mr. Volke. Aye. Ms. Fiedler. Aye. Ms. Radvian. Aye. And Ms. Pickard. Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Amendment number 10 has been adopted. Madam Secretary, please call, uh, please read amendment number 11. Amendment number 11. This amendment restates the method for hiring non-represented classified employees on the LG pay scale above the minimum pay, requires personnel officer approval for a pay rate exceeding a certain amount, and clarifies that a pay rate may not ever exceed the maximum pay for the grade. Thank you. This is, this is my amendment. Uh, after further uh, consultation and discussion, we um, decided to restate the amendment from Previous meeting, um, is there a motion to adopt? Rod being so moved. Is there a second? Second. Does the administration have any thoughts on amendment number 11? Is there any discussion? Yes. Mr. Volke. Thank you. Does this mean that if we're gonna hire somebody at more than 15% of the minimum pay grade amount, then we have to get the personnel officer's approval? We as the legislative branch. Yes. Thank you. Seeing no further discussion, Madam Secretary, please call the roll on amendment number 11. Ms. Ledbetter. Nay. Mr. Smith. Nay. Ms. Hummer. Nay. Mr. Volke. Nay. Ms. Fiedler. Nay. Ms. Radvian. Aye. And Ms. Pickard. Aye. Two in the affirmative, five in the negative. Amendment number 11 has failed. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for that uh, collaborative work on bill number 4-24. Bill four, number 4-24 will be heard as amended on April 1st, Madam Secretary, please read the titles of bills number 6-24 and bills 7-24 at this time. Bill number 624, an ordinance concerning general development plan, region two plan. Bill number 724, an ordinance concerning comprehensive zoning, region two. This is an administration, these are administration bills. Mr. Hunt, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Ethan Hunt for the administration. With me at the table, I have Christina Pompa, Cindy Carrier, and Mark Wildonger from the Office of Planning and Zoning, and Kelly Kenny from the Office of Law. Uh, so these two bills um, address Region 2, and um, I'm happy to turn it over to Ms. Pompa if she wants to make any additional remarks. I know we've discussed this bill as well at prior hearing and work session. Christina Pompa with OPZ will entertain any questions you may have. Thank you. Is there any discussion at this time on Bill 6-24 or 7-24? I would ask uh, if anyone objects to a joint hearing on Bills number 6-24 and Bills number 7-24 as they are both related to Region 2. Mr. Volke. I just had a question, but no objection. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Go ahead and ask your question before I open the public hearing. Thank you. This is for you, Miss Kenny. Hot seat. Sorry about that. Um, 
the sign requirement that we put in last year that was the bill that said that if we change anything from what the recommendation was from SAC or OPZ that we have to do the posting of the sign and all this other stuff. My question is this. Um, I've seen that if we were to keep something exactly as it is, and that is not what's recommended by OPZ or SAC. So I'll give you an example. Property is zoned RLD. Property owner never asked for it to be changed. SAC and OPZ say, let's change it to something else. For us to say, we're going to keep it what the property owner has and not make any changes, we have to do this sign posting thing. We have to do the, the period of time where that sits out there. We have to wait on the amendment. Am I understanding that process correctly? Kelly County Supervising County Attorney. Yes, that is correct, based on the um, Bill 6923 that enacted the, right. the criteria for the charter provisions. All that right, so correct. then here's the bigger question. Could we pass an amendment to these bills that supersedes that provision of the code without having to come in with a standalone bill that would fix this for all subsequent regions? And the reason I'm asking that is I don't think there's enough time for us to be able to make that change to say if we're keeping something exactly as it's zoned right now, can we get rid of this sign requirement? I don't think we have enough time to do a bill to say that and get it through before these plans expire or these bills expire. So would that be something we could do by individual amendments to each of these? Kelly County Supervising County Attorney, let me make sure I understand your question. So are you, you're asking whether you can do an amendment, I guess, with, with each potential zoning change that would mm -hmm. somehow... To, or, or, or make an amendment to this bill that would take bill. away the requirements That's of exactly 6923. Right. Say we're going to we're going to take the requirements of 6923, and to the extent that we're going to keep a property exactly as it's zoned now, and we're not going to change it, so we're going to go against what SAC and OPZ recommended, and we're just going to keep the zoning exactly as is. The sign requirements don't apply. Could we do that as an amendment to this bill in front of us, not to each amendment, but to the whole bill? To the whole bill. <laughs> Mr. Volke, I, I don't think that we could do that because I think it would violate the one subject rule because the, these bills adopt the region plans and then the, the second bill adopts the comprehensive rezoning but makes no changes to the to the code itself. So we can certainly consider that and, and get back to you upon further consideration, but I don't think that we could do that um, because of before that reason, because we really are not making any changes to the code in this bill itself. And so to do that, we're kind of coming in and making a, a change to a provision of the bill outside of what the topic of this of this bill is. The, top, can, the topic is zoning. The sign requirements are in the zoning portion <laughs> of the code. Well, the topic is actually general development plan and comprehensive zoning, whereas usually a, a bill that's making it a change to um, Article 18, it, the topic is zoning, you know, Article 18. I'm not absolutely saying no. We're certainly happy to look into that, and we're obviously exploring that, that question for you and getting yes. some different options. And I understand your question. You're looking at whether we can amend this bill, or whether you'd have to do a standalone bill, which would at least, if it was an emergency measure or something of that nature, would at least be in effect in time for the subsequent regions, even if not in effect in time for these regions. Yeah, I think the cha just the challenge I see is, is it fair to regions two and seven if we realize this is an issue when they're in front of us and then we have these other regions coming and we say, we're going to fix this for the other regions, but not for two and seven. That seems to be problematic, especially given the number of amendments that I think people at some point may want to bring before the council and these sign requirements recognizing how onerous they're becoming. Understood. So, to the extent we can find a way to do this, I'm interested in hearing that. I, I understand the question. Nope. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Smith. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just to piggyback off of that uh, last comment, um, if please bring down, the, if, if during your deliberation you determine that it is not feasible, please draft a bill uh, uh, to come down to re at least remediate that for the subsequent bill. So that I'm 100% on board with that. Um, I will say, and I just want to say for the record that um, uh, sometimes I think uh, uh, council intent uh, sometimes plays out in, 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 in legal sort of genre uh, out there in the world. But uh, I must say when I when I first considered the two week uh, as well as the uh, provisions that we did in, in the other bill, my assumption was and this is just me being completely transparent, uh, is that we, if we were going to be making changes uh, that impact those communities, that uh, it was inherent for us to make sure we, make, we communicate that to the public. I wasn't, for me personally, I wasn't thinking, oh, if it stays the same, I got to communicate that it's staying the same to the public 
that didn't cross my mind. And so uh, I just wanted to state that <laughs> uh, as you go down this, this pathway um, uh, to, to figure that out. But uh, I'm certainly working with uh, planning and zoning because we have a number of amendments uh, that will be trickling in and they'll probably we're, we're closing in on maybe 20, 30 signs ish. More than 30. Exactly. On, the, on this specific uh, uh, issue. And it just seems especially for the ones that are the same. It's, it's staying. It's currently R one. We want to keep it R one. But yet we have to jump to this hoop to keep it R one. And it's just I just want to officially state that. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. I think uh, as we contemplated Bill 69, uh, 23, we we didn't we weren't able to maybe fully appreciate in the hypothetical what it would look like as we played it out. So I think uh, this council should certainly collaborate with the Office of Law and OPZ on any on a how any fix we can do, whether it's um, a new piece of legislation, whether it's emergency legislation, I think we should all put our thinking caps on and work collaboratively. Uh, seems like there's a, a consensus on the council that lessons have been learned. <laughs> um, with that, if there's no further uh, discussion at this time, I am going to open the joint public hearing on Bill 6-24 and Bill number 7-24. Um, Madam Secretary, did we receive any testimony through the online testimony tool? Uh, Madam Chair, there was no testimony received for Bills 624 and 724, or the Region 2 plan and comprehensive zoning bills. If there, we have no one signed up in advance to speak uh, that I'm aware of? No. Uh, if there's anyone here who wishes to speak on Bills number 6, and seven dash 24, please come up to the table and have a seat. When it's your turn, state your name and address for the record. Remarks will be limited to two minutes. If you have more than two minutes to share, I'm going to ask you to submit additional thoughts using our online testimony tool. Mr. Muller, you have the floor. Thank you, Gary Muller, <coughs> Jessup, Maryland. Um, <coughs> Ellen Moss and I have gone door to door um, in the last month or two uh, in Mr. Smith's district and um, talking to the, the community residents about the consistency maps, the uh, planned uh, uh, document, and the consistency spreadsheet. Um, we got a lot of feedback. Unfortunately, I can't quote the feedback in this mixed community of, of, of assembled people because it wasn't very nice. The, the community is upset because they didn't know about what was going on. And we, we talked to uh, about 50 people door to door, plus another 50 showed up at a general uh, JIA town hall meeting. And people are mad because they, they, don't, they didn't know this was coming. They didn't know their property was being rezoned from open space to all R1. They, you know, it, it's just amazing to me that the comments that we got, and, and I'm, we're very disgusted that these changes, people didn't, were, are being proposed. People didn't get a certified letter that said, hey, we're going to do something to your property. And people want to be, think they need to be informed. We had the plan 2040. We had the plan uh, uh, Region 2 for two years. And not once would the would the, the members of the SAC, April Walker, Kevin McFarton, Nicole Welsh, plenty of opportunities to come out and meet with the community at a town hall meeting. If I can call a meeting and I can get 50 people to show up, and boy, they gave Mr. Smith a hard time that night. But um, if uh, if I can do it, what's the problem with OPZ that they they can only get a meeting where there's um, Ellen? Uh, me, Pat Hooker, Scott uh, Scooter Norbeck, and a developer. You know, that should say there's something wrong with the process. Thank you, Mr. Muller. Ms. Fox. Um, before I start, Laura Corby has a map that I'd like to share with you. Laura, it's the one with the pink. It's, it's on our... Okay, great. Um, um, my name is Kate Fox. I live in Davidsonville, and I'm the chair of the Legislative Committee of Growth Action Network. Traffic in West County is some of the worst in the county. The roads are consistently choked with traffic, even outside the two rush hour periods. The Odenton and Savage train stations bracket Fort Meade and NSA, major employment centers. Yet there's no specific county bus routes between those stations, as you can see on the map. 
Many of the roads in the residential areas of this region are based on former buggy roads, as Gary says, and are not adequate to serve the current population density, let alone increased density, both residential and commercial, that the Region 2 plan proposes. And there's a limited adjoining land to expand or improve the roads. Yet, the Region 2 plan includes several transit-oriented development policy overlays without the existence of transit or regular train service currently coming to the Savage Station. This makes no sense. As I mentioned in my earlier testimony, we need the transit planning first, then the high-density development. Thank you. Thank you. This panel is dismissed. Is there anyone else in the audience that wishes to speak on either Bills 6 or 7-24? Seeing no movement in the audience, the public hearing on the joint public hearing on bills number six and seven is now closed. Madam Secretary, please read the titles of bills number six dash twenty four and seven dash twenty four. Bill number 624, an ordinance concerning general development plan, region two plan. Bill number 724, an ordinance concerning comprehensive zoning, region two. Is there any further discussion from the council on either Bill 6-24 or 7-24 at this time? Seeing none, may I get a motion to hold the vote on Bills number 6-24 and 7-24 until April 1st, 2024? Motion to hold the vote until those dates you specified. Is there a second? Madam Secretary, please call the roll on the motion to hold the vote. Ms. Ledbetter. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Ms. Hummer. Aye. Mr. Volke. Aye. Ms. Fiedler. Aye. Ms. Radvian. Aye. And Ms. Pickard. Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. The motion to hold the votes on bill numbers 624 and 724 has been passed. Madam Secretary, I just wanted to go back in time. If I could, I'm I believe I meant to leave the public hearing on bills six and seven open. You wanted to hold that? Yes, we were going to keep those open. But I'm afraid I just closed the public hearings. Well, I think that um, you can just change that decision and just state okay. for the record that you are not going to <laughs> well, not going to close the public hearings on bill number six twenty four and seven twenty four, and you're going to hold them open instead. Thank you. In my error, I would like to uh, retract that statement earlier and keep the public hearings on Bill 6-24 and 7-24 open at this time. Madam Chair, just we yes. concur with you as well. I concur with you as well. Just don't. Great. Thank you. Madam Secretary, please read the title of Bill number 8-24. Bill number 824, an ordinance concerning general development plan, region seven plan. And I guess you should read bill number nine 24 as well. If we're gonna have a joint public hearing. Bill number 924, an ordinance concerning comprehensive zoning, region seven. Thank you. Again, these are uh, administration bills. Do you have the floor, Mr. Hunt? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Ethan Hunt for the administration. With me at the table are Christina Pompa, uh, Cindy Carrier, and Patrick Hughes from the Office of Planning and Zoning, and Kelly Kenny from the Office of Law. Um, these two bills deal with Region 7. We discussed them at a prior work session and prior hearing, and we're happy to answer any questions. Is there any discussion on either of these bills at this time? If my colleagues concur, we will move to open the joint public hearing on bill number 8-24 and bill number 9-24, both which are related to region seven. We'll now open the joint public hearing on bills number 8-24 and 9-24. Madam Secretary, did we receive any testimony through the online testimony tool? 
Uh, yes, Madam Chair, members of the Council. There were 16 submissions specifically for Bill Number 824 and about 15 submissions specifically for Bill Number 924. Uh, every Council member received a copy of the full submission via email. A summary is posted on the website and everything will be added to the appropriate meeting record. We do have speakers signed up in advance. I'll read your names. Um, I have Mary Guy, Dorothy Guy, Ann Myers, Mary Guy, Robert D. Hauk. I think that's our first six. Am I counting that right? One, two, three, four. And Mr. Ted Krause. Are there seats for everyone? We'll proceed with Miss Mary Guy. State your name in the for the record, you have two minutes. Hello, my name is Mary Guy. I'm 605 North Bestgate Road. I appreciate Ms. Rodian's responsivity and want to reiterate the following. I strongly oppose all zoning requests, including the new zoning requests, whether they come from uh, people here or from council members bringing them forth. As we stated before, the devastated, everlasting, costly, and negative impact on the environment, wildlife, including but not limited to migratory and non-migratory birds, the residents, taxpayers, and future generations of Anne Arundel County mean that this plan is not warranted. The prior study of the Weems Creek area has, as completed shows its import to the environment and region. You can see the Greenway strategy for Weems Creek as completed by the U.S. Department of Interior and the Maryland Department of Natural Resources. In addition, OPZ has already said it has sufficient housing to meet the identified needs for 2040. New units are not needed when the existing units can be used or rehabbed. People should be encouraged to purchase their residence, including the land, so that they are not in a perpetual state of paying someone else for the land and unit, and they can develop equity and financial stability. Developers and management companies are interested in creating condos, townhouses, land rental units, such as build to lease, as they would continue to own the land, build a residence for ongoing use, maintenance, et cetera, thus perpetuating an indentured state. The window of opportunity for both of these bills must be closed. Thank you. Thank you. Dorothy Guy. Thank you. First, I'd like to thank Councilwoman Rod Rodvian for her efforts to amend the zone Region 7 plan and Bill 824 to eliminate all references to a village center and sector plan for Ridgely Avenue and the Weems Creek community. I hope that all members of the Council support the amendments that she is proposing. I'd like to ask the Council not to vote tonight to adopt either or, or regarding the adoption of either Bill 824 or 924. Uh, the public needs time to review the amendments, make sure that they are complete on 824. I also suggest to you that an, an amendment to Bill 924 may be needed to change the digital zoning layer to conform to the amendments that are being made to the Region 7 plan in Bill 824. I was not aware of the complete amendments uh, before tonight's hearing, so was not able to identify that issue in my comments submitted in writing. I oppose all upzoning requests in the Ridgely Avenue and Weems Creek area, including recent requests to upzone uh, with the numbers at the end, GRA 601 and GRA 001, for 2 Willow Road and Willow Road and 617 and 623 Ridgely Avenue, respectively. I support low-density residential zoning for the entire Ridgely Avenue and Weems Creek community, as this is consistent with the current status of the community. 
I also um, note in terms of not voting on the bills tonight, we have the Article 18 posting requirements that uh, Mr. Smith and others and Mr. Volke addressed on the hearing tonight for Bill 624 and 724. That same issue applies here as Mr. Volke and Mr. Smith noted, and that needs to be corrected before these bills move forward. Um, and uh, finally, I'd like to ask, Mr. Volke, why did you introduce zoning changes outside Thank of your you. district? Thank you. We will now be moving on to Ms. Ann Myers. Thank you. I'm Ann Myers, 606 Dreams Landing Way. I'm here with several individual Dreams Landing homeowners representing our opposition to the proposed rezoning along Ridgely Avenue. Um, the council, of course, has already heard substantial arguments against the project because of environmental concerns and a huge outpouring of community commentary in favor of low density zoning. But let's right now, tonight, focus on a transportation issue that could be critical. As you know, all of the uh, surrounding roads, North, Beth, North Best Gate, Wilson Road, and Ridgely Avenue are all single lane narrow roads. Backups happen all the time at rush hour and against Naval and around Naval Academy games and other events at the stadium and during school pickups and drop offs. A real problem is the narrow, very narrow and old Weems Creek Bridge, which causes tremendous delays because it's really broken and inoperable half the time. And people who are driving down there to get to Annapolis literally have to do a U-turn on Ridgely Avenue and back all the way up to Bestgate, Wilson, and Roe Boulevard to have any way out of the community. It's a very isolated area. Um, uh, so as homeowners, we want very much to be heard to strongly oppose the development of this area. It is not suitable for high density development. It's a small, almost rural little space with narrow roads. We don't want the change and development it would be completely out of context and character here. And we hope that the best course the county will see is to focus development where infrastructure and services are already in place. Thank you. Thank you. Next I have Mr. Robert Houck. Yes. <laughs> you have the floor, sir. Hi. My name is Bob Houck, uh, 617 Ridgely Avenue. Uh, I've had my business there since 2007. Um, it was a, it's, it had always been a commercial property. Um, and I subsequently bought uh, what is now 623 Ridgely Avenue. And um, I have, which was a vacant uh, property for approximately 15 years. I bought it and uh, there, there was uh, two inches of water in the basement. Uh, the roof was had holes, multiple holes in it. The windows were rotten. I replaced the roof with a metal roof, uh, put all new windows in, attempted to get a building permit and was stopped by the county. Uh, and I've been waiting since uh, 2018 to, uh, to get through this um, quagmire of the SB district. I want to thank the council for passing upgrades to the SB district to allow that property to have that has more than 3,000 square feet to be utilized. Um, I do believe that that the SB zoning is uh, essential to have to remain in that area because it permits um, residential housing in it. Um, the next door neighbor in 615 is a two elementary school teachers with two boys. Um, and they've been there for eight years. Um, then there's two more commercial buildings uh, that um, Mr. Krauss has invested substantial sums of money to rehab those buildings as they were originally. He's kept the clapboard siding. He's done all kinds of uh, work on the insides of those properties to bring them up to speed. And the two properties that he's asking to, to upgrade the zoning. Uh, Thank you, sir. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Ted Krause, Mr. Ted, 
I'm getting your name wrong. Cross. Okay, Uh, good evening, uh, Ted Kraus, uh, DB and Landmark Property, 16 Maryland Avenue. My family owns four rentals on Ridgely Avenue at the corner of Willow Road. Um, it, they're cross-hatched on this map, and I can hand out others uh, if you're interested. Contrary to some social media, we don't own any unoccupied buildings on uh, Ridgely Avenue. All four of our properties were uninhabitable when we bought them and after significant improvements are all code compliant and occupied. Two as residences, as just mentioned by my neighbor, and two as businesses. We are especially proud of having saved the historic building at number 613. It's the last 19th century structure still standing on Ridgely. Uh, we did a complete restoration. Earlier, we asked for a change to C2. Scratch that. Uh, tonight, I'm here to respond to some of the neighbor's claims to say that we as a community uh, and to say that we as a community can do much better than the status quo, particularly near Route 50 and along Willow Road. The rumors have been wild and unfounded, like I plan to build a 700-unit apartment building on this little postage stamp of land. Some would have you believe that this section originally is bucolic rural roadway it's just not true. As shown here in pink, this is all commercial property, C1, C2, C3, and a special can use, use permit that surrounds. Uh, these properties are really dominated by commercial property. I remember when Ridgely Avenue was an access route to Route 50. Today, the traffic is relatively light. Smart growth calls for this infrastructure to be used more fully rather than pave over South County. Responding to another concern, all of the stormwater from our land flows south under Route 50 to a holding pond. None flows toward Cove of Cork. I'm a supporter of the sector study because it offers a chance to consider the opportunities and respond to the clear deeds. The community can and should do better. Thank you, sir. This panel is dismissed at this time. Thanks, I have, yeah. I have one more um, individual signed up. Stephanie Schulman. Yeah, is Stephanie Schulman in the? That's thank helpful. You. you. Thank you. You can. Tell me your name, I'm sorry. Nancy oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I have you those calling in. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I didn't I didn't understand. No problem. I okay, no problem. Have a seat. Ms. Shulman, you have the floor. Hi, my name is Stephanie Shulman and I've been lived in Lindemore for forty three years. I want to thank you, the council, for your statements that you made at the last meeting. These statements alluded to the fact that Ridgely and Wilson Road Corridor would not be developed. I'm here to thank you for those comments. The council should know that commercial development at this corner is unnecessary. We have every imaginable shop within a five minute drive. Ridgely Avenue and Bestgate and our little bridge, which is usually broken, cannot handle additional traffic that a commercial development would bring. But then I did a little sleuthing on the internet and I found that there are 15 properties that have been asked to be rezoned C2. These 13 properties are owned by four people. Seven of them are owned by Landmark Properties, one each by an Andrew West and a Ridgely Avenue LLC, and two by Michael Ostrovsky. I know that the current owners of these properties are astute. They would have not finalized these sales without due diligence and feasibility studies to assure that their purchases would have allowed them to finalize their plans. They would not have made these investments without assurances from zoning that zoning changes could be forthcoming. So I asked myself, and I ask you, what inside information, what assurances were given to these four property owners prior to the purchases of property? Although the council stated that the zoning requests had been turned down, we in the community want to be ensured that the zoning is not changed through backdoor negotiation. We in the community want to make sure that no one in the government has given these owners a yellow light 
to proceed with zoning variances. And we want the government, my government, to assure the property and the people of my community that the zoning will not be changed to C2. I fervently hope this council will listen to the many in the community and not to four property owners. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Guy? My name is, oh. My name is Nancy Guy, 605 Bes North Bescate Road. I oppose the Region 7 plan as originally presented in the County Council on January 5th, 2024, where it relates to the Village Center and Sector Plan for Ridgely Avenue in the Weems Creek community and any upzoning of properties within those areas. I am also opposing Bill 824 as it would adopt the Region 7 plan. I respectfully ask that the County Council offer and adopt amendments to Bill 824 that would extinguish the Village Center and Sector Plan for the Ridgely Avenue and the Weems Creek area. Thank you to Con Councilwoman Lisa Rosvian for working tire tirelessly with her constituents to make these results come to life. The OPZ must remove example strategy number two on page 78 and 79 of the Region 7 Plan that is, is discussed in the Region 7 Village Center Sector Plan for Ridgely Avenue and Weems Creek area. It must also remove any and all pictures, maps, and language relating to the Village Center and Sector Plan for all the Ridgely Avenue and Weems Creek area community. I also oppose any upzoning of R2 to C2 or SB for any properties along the Ridgely Avenue and Williams Creek area. This area is a neighborhood preservation area and should remain as such due to lack of public sewer and adequate water sources. In addition, I ask that you deny the zoning applications change submitted on February 24th for 617 and 623 Ridgely Avenue from S2, um, from SB to C2, for which OPZ has already recommended that they remain as SB. And the application submitted on 314.24 for 2 Willow Road from R2 to SB. SB and C2 are not needed or warranted Thank you, in the neighborhood preservation area. Thank you for the time. You, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Ms. Johnson. Julie Johnson, P.O. Box 6634, Annapolis, Maryland. Uh, I would like to thank a lot of people who have done a lot to clean up this mess. There are a lot of us who are absolutely, you know, bonkers. We've been stressed, you know, with what's going on with the attempt to really convert what has been a, you know, a, an incredibly stable part, portion of Annapolis. Um, in spite of the fact that she, you know, as long as you don't worry too much about the fact that in 1952 they created Rao Boulevard um, and took out what w was a part of the, the land, you know, part of my land went right across Rao Boulevard and up the hill to, to the west side of, of uh, Rao Boulevard. Um, and then, uh, but when they decided to widen Rao Boulevard and connect it to Bestgate Road, they took 105 feet well, excuse me, it was 160 feet more or less by 105 feet out of the backyards of the parcels that I own. That was a hunk of land right there on Rao Boulevard, so I know it's got value. I had to litigate from 87, I think it was, until 93, and when I did, basically the attorneys and their, their expert witnesses walked away with the money, and by the time I paid income taxes, I couldn't even buy the new car that I really wanted to get for my kids so I could take them, you know, the, 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 the scouting kids. We call go camping. Oh, no. Um, the, additionally, it's very important to me that we make a point about this SB, small business. During the process, I, I asked about it. Um, Patrick Hughes explained to me, well, there is some discussion about it. I said, look, what it says is that this is a transition zoning from pro you know, communities that are currently residential and, you know, the, you know, will be changing to commercial. Well, doggone it, in my book, somebody's going to find an attorney who's going to say, well, it says we get to do it. It's mandatory. You can't keep us from doing this. So I asked the council, this is an important legislation to address. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Oh, thank you. Your two minutes have expired. The, the public hearing on bills 8 dash
Excuse me. My my apologies. My apologies. This is going to be fun. Is there anyone else in the audience at this time who wishes to come forward to testify on bills 8-24 and 9-24? I have six seats. Okay. Ma'am, you have the floor. Oh, thank you. I'm Stacia Ressler. I live at 1878 Lindemore Drive. I want to thank um, Ms. Rodby and our council person again for her public commitment to accept OPZ's recommendations and not accept variances along the Ridgely Corridor. However, before we knew about that commitment, I had written to each of you to tell you all about the Ridgely Corridor and how we hoped that you would support OPZ's recommendations. Mr. Volke responded to me very kindly. I will tell you that the perspective of the member on the council representing a community is important to me, in this case, Councilwoman, uh, Councilwoman Rodbian. I will be interested to hear her position after she's met with OPZ and heard from the community. So Mr. Volke, I would appreciate it if you would explain to us um, why you decided to support an amendment on the Willow properties that are in the Ridgely Corridor that Ms. Rodbian said she would not support the upzoning of those, but there's an amendment posted that says you're going to support it and you're going to bring forth that amendment. Why would you do that when it's not your district? Thank you, ma'am. Sir, you have the floor. Gordon, Gordon Ressler, 1878 Lindemore Drive. Um, over and over, people have testified about Ridgely Avenue Quarter that uh, further development particularly commercial development, but also small business, would cause environmental problems. They would exacerbate the environmental problems that are already occurring due to the two large commercial properties, which are both medical in nature. Um, there was an erroneous statement made earlier tonight that there is no runoff into Cove of Cork. I have video to the contrary, and I can show this runoff coming from both commercial properties. The holding pond overflows. The, the water runs down the roads. The silt is picked up in the unlined trench that goes into the cove, and siltation and environmental damage is occurring. Given that, given that there is, let's say, disagreement about whether or not there's environmental damage, I cannot imagine why anyone would approve zoning changes there without an environmental study. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am? My name is Claire Chapman. I live at um, 5 Gladden Road. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just want to talk about the transportation area. The roads are too crowded. I don't know if the council knows, but there have been two fatal accidents um, uh, within the last 20 years when I've lived there on Ridgely Road. And that is, it's because the road is too small. We have no sidewalks. Rather than going through with this bill, why don't we put in sidewalks there so that the people can walk on one of the, one of the fatalities was a walker. And so if we put in sidewalks, we will be improving that area. But we cannot use any more traffic there. Thank you. Sir, you have the floor. Good evening. My name is John Lagrateria. I'm also a resident of uh, Sleepy Hollow Lane, which is part of the Lindemore development. Um, I just want to elaborate on a statement that the gentleman made earlier that the area of Ridgely Road is, in fact, predominantly commercial. If you include small business in commercial, then yes, but there are many residents there as well as small businesses, and there's a very big difference between small business and C2 commercial property. And that's what we're opposed to. Right now, it's being it's held in a manageable state. The businesses look like homes. They blend into the community. And that's what we appreciate. And that's what it's called for, frankly, in, in uh, some documents. And then to give them the ability to turn around and, and add all these properties together and completely rezone it and rebuild and put a true commercial property there would be, as my colleagues at the table have mentioned, environmental disaster. And that's our biggest concern. Thank you. 
ma'am. I'm oh, sorry. Hi, I'm Melanie Arena. I live at 1879 Loose Creek Drive. It's at the very end of Ridgely Avenue. Um, and I have lived there for 20 years. Um, most of my neighbors are older and they have all been very worried about this. Of course, they're worried about traffic. They're older. Driving down Ridgely right now is already crazy. The corner of Ridgely and North Bestgate, anytime it rains, is it's a lake there right now. It's terrible. It's just gotten worse over the years. They talk a lot about, um, you know, how it's going to change, and they've been, you know, they've been there 50 years, all of them. But um, I like to thank all my neighbors from Lindemore who came and from Dreams Landing because we walk our dogs down in that area all the time and talking with everyone. Everyone is really concerned about it. Um, and Mr. Kraus, you mentioned um, that you rehabbed Willow. And if that's rehabbing, then I'm really afraid to see what your buildings are going to bring because I walk my dogs down Ridgely and I look at Willow and it's a disaster. So um, you're not going to get my vote on that. But um, I just I want to thank everybody who's working hard to make this work. But um, I think the consensus on Loose Creek Drive and Dreams Landing and Lindemore is um, we don't need extra commercial. As my neighbor here was saying, the commercial that we have there now is it's very subdued and it's it's nice. It's nice to look at. Um, we we want to keep our wildlife um, preserved, and and it really brings a problem with with more commercial. We have enough, but no, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fox. Fox Chair of Growth Action Network Legislative Committee. On the theme of we need infrastructure improvements before rezoning, as these people can tell you, and testimony before um, previously has said the Region 7 plan and associated comprehensive zoning was that the Annapolis West, I'm sorry, West Annapolis and Ridgely neighborhoods are not on public water and sewer. The county has a master plan for water and sewer. The updated plan was recently passed in this council in 2022. Map F7, which you have, um, shows that there is a two or three block area only served by a force main and pumping station in the Ridgely West Annapolis area, but otherwise shows only future service plan for that area. And the map indicates there's no plan for future service, let alone a timeline or develop for development of the service. Yet the region seven SAC was asked by multiple property owners for increased density in that area. We support OPZ and the PAB not recommending any increased zoning in this area, but applications for amendments to the comprehensive rezoning bill will be coming in. Please consider this lack of infrastructure when you consider any amendments for properties in this area. Thank you. Thank you. This panel is dismissed. Last call for bills 824 and 924. Sir, okay. Sure. Sir, state your name and address for the record. Len Hamilton, 605 North Bestgate Road. And I really just wanted to uh, encourage extending the time for public hearing on this, just like we did on six and seven, mm -hmm. in light of the uh, the recent amendments that we didn't have time to look at in detail. Thank you. Thank you. I will now close the joint public hearing on bills 824 and 924 at this time. Madam Secretary, please read the title of bill number 8-24. Bill number 824. Excuse me one moment, to a different page here. And an ordinance concerning general development plan, region seven plan. We have amendments to this bill. If I can find my list, here they are. Uh, before we go into amendments, is there any further discussion from my colleagues or the administration? Nope. Uh, Madam Secretary, please read amendment number one. Amendment number one. This amendment corrects an error that removed 1.92 and 1.92 acre parcel off of Old South River Road, known as parcel 157 on tax map 51 from the critical corridor as shown on the development policy area map. Um, Madam Chair, too, I just wanted to um, let everybody know I'm going to put the maps up on the screen 
Uh, initially with printing, we mixed up some maps. I thought we had caught all of the bad copies, but there may be some bad ones in circulation. So I'm just gonna put those maps up on the screen. Thank you. Mr. Hunt, this is your amendment. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. The amendment does what was described, <laughs> corrects the omission. Is there a motion to adopt amendment number one? Rodney and so moved. Is there a second? Is there any discussion at this time on amendment number one? Just wanted to confirm Mr. the, uh, oh, Madam Chair, uh, for each of these amendments, uh, if the council member that's impacted by it, if they could also give their, uh, obviously I know there are some other ones that are coming from Ms. Ravian, but the, the one, this is obviously the administration, so if, if the council member has any thoughts on it, please, Sure. Thank you. Thank you. This is really correcting an error, and like um, the county executive often states, I oppose errors in our code. So I support this amendment. Any further discussion on amendment number one? Madam Secretary, please call the roll on amendment number one. Ms. Ledbetter. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Ms. Hummer. Aye. Mr. Volke. Aye. Ms. Fiedler. Aye. Ms. Radvian. Aye. And Ms. Pickard. Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Amendment number one has been adopted. Thank you. Madam Secretary, please read amendment number two. Amendment number two. This amendment moves a portion of Annapolis snack that is between US 50 and Weems Creek, as shown on the Region 7 map, to the greater Annapolis area. Ms. Rodbian, this is your amendment. You have the floor. Thank you. So I just want to start out by saying thank you um, to Office of Planning and Zoning and Office of Law who um, helped craft these amendments after our discussions about what we were trying to achieve. Um, this one really is, I think we could, uh, anyone who lives in this area knows that you can debate up, down, left, and right, what part of town you live, what's considered parole, what's considered Annapolis Neck. So this is um, our best attempt to get it right. Um, and for that reason, I move to adopt amendment number two. Is, is there a second? second? Is there any, uh, does the administration want to comment on amendment number two? Um, the, the map that's, um, on the screen here, this was the community map as it was adopted, or as it was adopted by, uh, Plan 2040, it, um, drew the line between the Weems Creek, Creek community, it drew it at, uh, US 50, and so this brings those two sides of the community together based on the input that we got, uh, during the outreach, uh, through this plan. Ms. Rodbian. Thank you. Um, I actually want to ask a question of um, Madam Secretary. There is, actu there is actually a typo in, this, um, in, in the printed version that's in front of us. Section 1, it references Anne Arundel County Region 2 plan, and surely we meant Region 7. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, if I could just respond to Ms. Rodvian. Of course. Um, that was caught just before the start of the meeting, unfortunately. All three amendments show that in that first part. It says Region 2. It should say Region 7. We have corrected that in the official copy of the amendment. Very um, appreciated. Thank you. It, and I think everyone here got a copy in their electronic uh, file, and it is also corrected um, in that packet that's posted online. Thank you. Really appreciate you catching that. And Updating it. Um, the credit goes to the law office. They caught it just before the meeting. Any further discussion on amendment number two? Madam Secretary, please call the roll on amendment number two. Uh, Ms. Ledbetter. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Ms. Hummer. Aye. Mr. Volke. Aye. Ms. Fiedler. Aye. Ms. Radvian. Aye. And Ms. Pickard. Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Amendment number two has been adopted. Madam Secretary, please read amendment number three. 
Amendment number three, this amendment removes references to the village center, village center development policy overlay, sector study, and sector plan in the Ridgely Avenue area. Ms. Radvian, this is your amendment. You have the floor. Thank you. I think that description is exactly, is exactly accurate. So I don't know that I have anything to add to the description just provided. So I move to adopt. Is there a second? Would the administration like to comment on amendment number three? We, we no opposition. Oh, I have a question. For <laughs> um, so we've heard a lot of testimony about this part of Region Seven and you know, everything from traffic to sidewalks to um, small business, residential, no, con no commercial. Just for the, re for the record, can you explain what uh, a sector plan or sector study would, would encompass before I remove it from an entire plan? Christina Pompa with the Office of Planning and Zoning. Generally, a sector, sector plan is like a mini master plan. Um, the region plan is a master plan. This would just be on a much smaller scale. We had our first community meeting with the Ridgely Avenue um, community uh, in February of 2023, and there certainly has been a lot of discussion. There were many uh, members of the community that came out to a number of the SAC meetings. Because we did not necessarily hear consensus on the issues, we thought doing some additional planning would be a good option. You know, we are planners and we'd like to plan. But we do understand that there are many in the community that didn't support that, and therefore we do support Ms. Rodvian's amendment to remove uh, the reference to the sector plan. I appreciate that, and I appreciate Ms. Rodvian uh, being responsive to her community. I just, you know, it does, um, I just am, and I'll support the amendment with that in mind. However, um, I just, it just does, it does strike me that a few loud voices are ruling the day in this case. And we are looking to plan for the future and plan 2040 is about the future. So it, it's a pretty neat, I think, to be able to have a sort of a mini sector plan opportunity in a community. I know I know areas of my community would have welcomed it. So I just wanted to note that for the record. Uh, is there any further discussion on amendment number three? Madam Chair. Yes. I'll just note that um, if this area of Region 7 does not go forward with any of the plans, that will free up more resources for neighborhoods that are more enthusiastically in support. Good point. Good point. Nope. Uh, Madam Secretary, please call the roll on amendment number three. Ms. Ledbetter. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Ms. Hummer. Aye. Mr. Volke. Aye. Ms. Fiedler. Aye. Ms. Rodvian. Aye. And Ms. Pickard. Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Amendment number three. Okay. Okay. So I just want to make sure we go through this correctly. This was our last amendment for Bill 8-24. It will come back as amended on April 1st. We do need, I'm just going to do that, right? And I got to move to Bill number 9-24. <laughs> Madam Secretary, we've already read in a second time Bill 924. We have not. I can read it in again. It's Let's a, do that. It's a just short in case. title. It's just easy. in case. Bill number 924, an ordinance concerning comprehensive zoning, Region 7. So we don't have any amendments for this bill at this time, but we do need to hold the vote. So is there a motion to hold the vote on Bill number 9-24 until April 1st, 2024? Rod being so moved. Uh, Madam Secretary, uh, um, call the roll on the hold, please. Ms. Ledbetter. 
Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Ms. Hummer. Aye. Mr. Volke. Aye. Ms. Fiedler. Aye. Ms. Rodvian. Aye. And Ms. Pickard. Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. The motion to hold the vote on Bill Number 924 to April 1st has been adopted. Okay, we will now move forward on Bill Number 13-24. Madam Secretary, please read the title of Bill Number 13-24. Bill Number 1324, an ordinance concerning payment in lieu of taxes, College Parkway Place, Annapolis, Maryland. This is an administration bill. Mr. Hunt, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Ethan Hunt for the administration. With me at the table are Aaron Karpowitz from Arundel Community Development Services, Brian Schenk from the Office of Finance, and Kelly Kenny from the Office of Law. Uh, Bill 1324 was discussed at the last work session. It authorizes the county executive to enter into a payment in lieu of taxes or pilot agreement for College Parkway Place um, with RF College Parkway LLC uh, to replace an existing pilot for 170 units of rental housing for 40 years. And the new pilot is necessary because of um, renovations. And I can turn it over to Erin if she wants to add any additional information. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair and members of the council. As Ethan said, um, it's necessary to, it's, it's basically continuing the existing pilot for an additional 20 years so that the owner, the current owner can get loan financing and, and service the debt payment to do a comprehensive rehabilitation. The property hasn't <clears throat> had major rehabilitation since 2004. Is there any discussion from my colleagues at this time? Ms. Rodvian. I just want to say this is a great situation and thank you for your part in uh, facilitating it. Seeing no other comments from my colleagues at this time, we'll now open the public hearing on bill number 13-24. Madam Secretary, did we receive any testimony through the online testimony tool? We did not receive anything ahead of time, Madam Chair. Thank you. We don't have any speakers for bills 13-24? Uh, is there anyone here now who wishes to speak on bill number 13-24? Seeing no movement in the audience, um, I will close the public hearing on bill number 13-24. Madam Secretary, please read the title of bill number 13-24. Bill number 1324, an ordinance concerning payment in lieu of taxes, College Parkway Place, Annapolis, Maryland. Is there any further discussion from my colleagues at this time? Would the administration like to make any final comments on Bill 13-24? Ms. Karpowitz, thank you as always for your tireless work on affordable housing in our county. Uh, Madam Chair. Madam, oh, sorry. No, you're fine. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ms. Fiedler. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just wanted to thank everyone at the table for the ongoing conversations on this bill. Um, there's, there are a lot of essential um, uh, improvements that need to be done in this list, um, but the scope does go beyond what I'm comfortable with and the complexity of pilot programs. It's not easy to go through um, and take those out just because I'm not comfortable with them. So I'm not going to introduce any amendments, but I hope that this gives uh, background for my vote this evening. Thank you. Seeing no other comments on Bill 13-24, Madam Secretary, please call the roll on Bill 13-24. Ms. Ledbetter. Nay. Mr. Smith. Aye. Ms. Hummer. Aye. Mr. Volke. Nay. Ms. Fiedler. Nay. Ms. Rodvian. Aye. And Ms. Pickard. Aye. Four in the affirmative, three in the negative. Bill number 1324 has been passed. Madam Secretary, please read the title of Bill Number 14-24. Bill Number 1424, an ordinance concerning subdivision and development, zoning, small business districts. Ms. Fiedler, this is your bill. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this bill is a cleanup to the previous small business bill uh, that passed just a few weeks ago. I uh, did not have an opportunity at the very end of the life of the bill to make amendments 
So these are the amendments I would have made had the bill um, gone through its entire life cycle. Uh, there are three areas that this bill amends from that bill that passed. Um, the bill reduces the allowable sign um, provisions in the previously passed bill, bringing it more in line with what was in the previous small business section of our code. It also um, brings back in the bulk regulations uh, for served by public sewer and not served by public sewer and restores the architectural features uh, more closely aligned with the original small business section of our code with some flexibility. And I will be introducing amendments at the appropriate time. Thank you, Ms. Fiedler. Uh, does the administration have any comments at this time? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Ethan Hunt for the administration with me at the table is uh, Kelly Kenny from the Office of Law. I do want to thank the sponsor for sharing this legislation and the amendments with us ahead of time, um, and we're comfortable with this bill. Thank you. Is there any discussion at this time for bills uh, for bill number 14-24 before I open the public hearing? You're going to do this. We'll now open the public hearing on bill number 14-24. Madam Secretary, did we receive any testimony through the online testimony tool? Yes, we did, Madam Chair. Members of the Council, there were six submissions made through the uh, online testimony tool. Everyone here got a full copy of those submissions. They are included in a summary that's posted online and will be added to the meeting record. I have three um, individuals signed up to speak on bill num who signed up in advance. Miss Dorothy Guy, Mary Guy, and Nancy Guy. If there's anyone else who wishes to speak on bill 14-24, you may, I can, three more individuals can come at this time and take a seat. Please state your name and address for the record. Remarks will be limited to two minutes. If you have more than two minutes to share, I'm going to ask you to submit additional thoughts using our online testimony tool. Ms. Dorothy Guy. My name is Dorothy Guy, 605 North Bestgate Road. My main objection to Bill 1494 is that it does not go far enough in rolling back the horrible amendments in Bill 92-23 that this council adopted several weeks ago. Um, Really what this council is doing is gutting residential areas that are near small business districts by allowing a huge influx of different uses in small business districts with all kinds of commercial type characteristics to these small businesses. My preference would be that you roll back and um, repeal Bill 92-23 in its entirety. If you are reluctant to do that, I ask that you add additional amendments to Bill 1494 to include restrictions on businesses in small business districts uh, regarding their operating hours, outdoor seating and activities, noise and exterior lighting to protect the local community. I will note that in the Ridgely Avenue and Weems Creek area, we have a small business district that just recently held a drumming circle at 10 p.m. at night that local residents could hear in the surrounding area. These are the kinds of impacts that local residents now have to put up with from small business districts. By making all these expansions in Bill 9223, you're going to ruin residential areas that are adjacent to small business districts. I ask that this council be more protective of the individual citizenry and less willing to adopt bills and amendments from commercial developers who don't live there. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Guy. Mary Guy, I have you next. 
quite yet. Thank you. Hello, my name's Mary Guy, 605 North Best Gate Road. I was looking today at Stuart Pittman's website, and one of the things that he mentions is his goal is to restore trust in government, create economic opportunity for all, implement smart growth principles, and promote health and wellness. Um, these are print the principles that guide us as we govern and work to make, make Anne Arundel County the best place for all. And I ask that each of the council members keep that in mind. Um, I echo the sentiments of the prior speaker. The proposed amendments do not maintain the integrity of and small scale intended for a small business district and would allow major commercial interferences in these areas which are situated with or near um, residential areas. Uh, at least two of the residents from different households and streets told me about the drumming that went on until 10 p.m. That was even with closed doors and windows. The drumming was disruptive, annoying, and disturbed the peace and tranquility of the area. How are these people supposed to recharge and rehabilitate when such disturbances are present? What about the impact of the noise to children who have to attend school and are expected to be refreshed and ready to learn? And the annoyance to wildlife as well? We all know that noise and lights are two factors that significantly impact the quality of sleep and well-being, so let's keep it uh, quiet and with limited lighting. And I concur with comments that were submitted by the prior speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Nancy Guy. Hi, my name is Nancy Guy, 605 North Buskate Road. I am overwhelmingly opposing Bill 1424, and I ask the County Council to do the same, changing the dimensions of signage from 15,000 square feet to 10,000 square feet means more signage potential brighter illumination and will impact our wildlife significantly as well as our residential residents sleeping patterns as well as children going to school and the elderly trying to recoup at home who wants to have bright bright light shining in their homes all hours of the night I know I do not as it is our wildlife does not have much time to roam as it is because of all the noise and traffic and its surrounding highways. I am also in opposition. I am also in opposition to changing the noise disturbance level in the community to 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. If anything, the noise level should be restricted to 8 p.m. to 9 a.m. Monday through Friday, 365 days of the year with no exception. We are a residential area that is coded as R2 and we are also a neighborhood preservation area. We must preserve and protect our community, both noise level as well as our wildlife. Please oppose Bill 1424. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Guy. Ms. Kate Fox. Thank you. Uh, Growth Action Network really wants to thank the sponsor of this bill for very quickly having it drafted to clean up some of the undesirable provisions added by Bill 9223 by amendment. We also appreciate the sponsor working with GAN to draft an amendment, Amendment 3, to, the, to remove um, laundry and dry cleaning uh, establishments, where, which were included in Bill 923 and the expansion of uses in that bill. Packet plants, <clears throat> which are packet plants, I'm sorry, are businesses where cleaning, processing, and packaging of items for pickup or delivery is conducted in one facility. While a wet laundry package plant is not, may not be an unacceptable use in small business and is consistent with the purpose for creating a small business zoning district, a dry cleaning package plant involves the use of solvents, which are toxic to human health and is not consistent with small business uses, especially adjacent to or near residential districts. Please adopt Amendment 3 at the appropriate time. Thank you. Thank you. This panel may be dismissed. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to speak on Bill 14-24? You may come forward at this time. Last call for 14-24. Five more seats. Mr. Muller, you have the floor. Thank you. We on? Gary Muller, Jessup. Um, I, I look at this small small business bills that have been batted around here, and uh, 
And I went to a lot of the, I went to all of the Region 2 small uh, uh, SAC meetings. And there was a lot of false information presented there that, that the small business <coughs> zoning wasn't working. And that's just not true. Um, it worked, you know, I, I worked closely with Councilwoman Pam Bottle back in the 2003, 2002 point. And, you know, the purpose of small business that Pam had was to keep the look and feel of a community. And that's what the, the 13 members of the, the um, Maryland, Justice Maryland City Plan wanted to do. And it wasn't to promote commercial. And, and it, I mean, what I'm hearing right now, it sounds like what, what this bill and these changes are, is basically turning small business into a, to a C1 district. And that wasn't the intent. And, and, the, and, the, and the basis whole effort on, on falsehoods coming from developers and OPZ saying, it doesn't work. Well, I'm sorry, it worked fine for what Jessup wanted to do for our community. It worked fine for what Pam Bidel had proposed and, and got through the council. So I, I, don't see, I don't see any reason to try to fix something that wasn't broken. It, it, it's kept our community looking like a, a community and it kept it looking nice. Don't turn it into a commercial district. If you if the developers want commercial, let them go apply for C1 or something or W1, whatever. Keep 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 small business, small business, and and a transition from heavy uses to homes. We have people living in the homes. They don't need to be next to a 12-story commercial building. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, again, I'm Melanie Arena. I live on Loose Creek Drive, which is about a mile from the drumming. <laughs> um, we did hear the drumming. I didn't know that's where it was coming from, but that makes sense now because uh, my dog woke me up, and I wasn't sure what it was, but I know what it is now. Um, clearly, that's not okay. I can't imagine. Um, I know the Guy family um, is much closer to that area, and... Um, just having something like that in our neighborhood. Can you imagine in the middle of Murray Hill or maybe on Maryland Avenue, which is where Mr. Krause lives? Um, that would never be okay. So I'm just asking for um, that equal consideration in our, in our residential neighborhood where we have much more wildlife and much more at stake here than even just being downtown. So... I appreciate all of you being here and, and listening to this because it's so important to our neighbors and especially my elderly neighbors who can't be here who, you know, give me that, please go <laughs> do the Aaron Brockovich. And I'm like, I'm not that. But thank you so much for for listening to us and, and my neighbors mean a lot to me. So thank you. Thank you. The public hearing on 14-24 is now closed. Madam Secretary, please read the title of Bill 14-24. Bill number 1424, an ordinance concerning subdivision and development, zoning, small business districts. Ms. Fiedler. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to clarify and respond to some of the comments um, during public testimony. So the, the previous small business bill that passed, which is um, currently code or shall be coming code um, in the next 30 days or so. Um, the signage provision in that bill allows for um, a sign as tall as 30 feet in the small business district, a square footage as high as 250 square feet, and allows signs on secondary structures. Those were items I had intended to amend but because of the way that the bill lifespan was cut a bit short, I ran out of time to change those. So this bill changes the sign provisions to no taller than six feet on the lower classified roads. Those are roads that are um, what you would typically think of semi-community roads and no taller than 10 feet on what we consider a highway. Um, the square footage uh, provision that is changed in this bill again the way that the previous bill passed 250 square feet the maximum 
based on road capacity is 30 feet, 30 square feet. So 30 foot square feet of signage space. That's if you think of, you know, how high, how uh, wide um, is greatly diminished with this bill. And uh, the bill also removes the provision to have signage on a secondary structure because I felt that that was too commercialized. So again, this bill is dialing all of those things back. Um, and if we don't pass the bill, uh, you, you could end up with a 30 foot tall sign in a small business district. And I don't think anyone wants that. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, seeing no other lights, we'll go ahead on with amendments. Madam Secretary, please read amendment number one. Amendment number one, this technical amendment removes a word that is not needed. Ms. Fiedler? This is accurate, and a motion to adopt. Is there a second? I assume the administration. Strong okay. support for removing extraneous words. Okay. Madam Secretary, please call the roll on amendment number one. Ms. Ledbetter? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Ms. Hummer? Aye. Mr. Volke? Aye. Ms. Fiedler? Aye. Ms. Rodvian? Aye. And Ms. Pickard? Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Amendment number one has been adopted. Madam Secretary, please read amendment number two. Amendment number two. This amendment provides for an exception from certain architectural features for religious facilities located in a small business district. Ms. Fiedler, this is your amendment. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, religious facilities are federally protected, and we also know that they don't always have eaves, they don't always have porches, so this uh, amendment exempts them for that reason. Motion to adopt. Second. Does the administration have any uh, thoughts on amendment number two? Uh, we're comfortable with this amendment. Is there any discussion from my colleagues? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, please call the roll on amendment number two. Ms. Ledbetter. Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Ms. Hummer? Aye. Mr. Volke? Aye. Ms. Fiedler? Aye. Ms. Rodvian? Aye. And Ms. Pickard? Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Amendment number two has been adopted. Madam Secretary, please read amendment number three. Amendment number three. This amendment removes dry cleaning and laundry establishments, including pickup stations, package plants, and coin-operated facilities limited to establishments with less than 4,000 square feet of floor area as a permitted use in small business districts. Ms. Fiedler, this is your amendment. Thank you, Thank you Madam Chair. Um, this amendment did come from public testimony from both the 6th District and the 5th District. Um, while I don't agree on all of the concerns, I also understand that dry cleaning and laundry establishments are in a booming and growing business. So I was willing to make a, a concession um, here. It may be something that we revisit down the road should, um, should the time be appropriate. Uh, but for the purpose of this bill, uh, I am proposing to remove it. Motion to adopt. Second. The administration have any Comments on amendment number three. We're comfortable with this amendment as well. Is there any further discussion from my colleagues? Ms. Rodvian. This is actually a point you brought up earlier today. Is, um, are there any uh, businesses operating currently as dry cleaning operations in small business zones? Kelly County Supervising County Attorney Lynn Miller isn't here today, but I think because it was just added in by Bill 9223, it'd be pretty unlikely that someone had started up since that bill just became effective March 29th. Is, isn't okay, so that yet. was an addition from, <laughs> okay, yep. and now it's a rewind. Thank you. Yep. I appreciate right. the clarification. Okay. Madam Secretary, please call the roll on amendment number three. Ms. Ledbetter. Aye. Mr. Smith, aye. Ms. Hummer, aye. Mr. Volke, aye. Ms. Fiedler, aye. Ms. Rodvian, aye. and Ms. Pickard. Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Amendment number three has been adopted. Okay. Madam Secretary, please read the title of resolution number 8-24. Resolution number 824, resolution to establish an ad hoc committee to study and make recommendations on personnel policies for the legislative branch of Anne Arundel County government. Uh, this is a council resolution with uh, several sponsors. 
Um, we do, I believe, have some amendments this evening. Um, did anybody want to, we've talked a little bit about it. Does anyone want to talk about it before we go into amendments? Seeing none. Uh, before we do amendments, we'll, we'll um, open the public hearing on resolution number 8-24. Madam Secretary, did we receive any testimony through the online testimony tool? We did not receive anything, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you. I have no one signed up in advance. If there is anyone here now who wishes to speak on resolution number 8-24, please come up to the table and have a seat. Seeing no movement in the audience, we will now close the public hearing on resolution 8-24. Um, Madam Secretary, please read amendment number one. Amendment number one, this amendment removes a reference to historic changes to the legislative branch of county government. Ms. Fiedler, this is your amendment. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. So this goes back to a quick conversation that we had during the work session about if the, is it the legislative branch that has changed significantly or the needs and priorities um, of the seven elected officials in the legislative branch. This amendment would change uh, that section of the resolution to read since 1964 the needs and priorities of the seven elected citizen legislators have grown and evolved motion to a job Second. Is there any uh, discussion amongst my colleagues? Oh Miss Rodvian, thank you I actually oppose this amendment because I can think of several and I'm sure if I sat down and spoke with other individuals who have observed the county council over time. They could come um, up with others as well. But one of the biggest ones that I, I think I think it's just important that people know about is when the uh, this charter you know charter uh, county county charter county came into existence. Um, the county council was all men, and the legislative aides were typically their spouses. Um, that to me is a pretty significant historical change. Even in the last couple years, I recall when I first was elected to the county council, we pretty much all had everything on paper. And now I'm seeing all seven of us sitting here with a laptop. So I think we could probably come up with more, but I, I think to you know, pretend that the council hasn't changed um, you know, since 1965. Is that the correct year? Four. Darn it. Ooh, it's our anniversary. Um, so for that reason, I, I oppose this amendment. Ms. Fiedler. Thank you, Madam Chair. I can totally appreciate um, your opposition. Um, for me, it's, I think it's just a difference of how we're defining change for the purposes of the resolution. Change for me would suggest um, that we are operating um, differently, that we're, um, every major change that we have to the charter has to go to voters. So I don't see the um, moving to from paper to digital as encompassing this, but I think we're just going to agree to disagree on this one. But thank you. We can't sit at our chairs with a glass of whiskey either. Is that the case? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, seeing no other uh, discussion about amendment number one, Madam Secretary, please call the roll on amendment number Number one, we moved and seconded it. Miss, uh, I had a, yep, we had a motion and a second. If I wrote that down. Um, Miss Ledbetter. Aye. Mr. Smith. Nay. Miss Hummer. Nay. Mr. Volke. Aye. Miss Fiedler. Aye. Miss Rodvian. Nay. And Miss Pickard. Nay. So uh, three in the affirmative, four in the negative. Amendment number one has been defeated. Madam Secretary, please read amendment number two. Amendment number two, this amendment clarifies that workplace provisions will potentially be revised. Ms. Fiedler, this is your amendment. Thank you, Madam Chair. The way that the resolution is currently written, it suggests, suggests that an absolute revision will happen, and I think that's a little cart before the horse. Um, the group has not met. Uh, this council has not yet seen any recommendations, so I thought potentially was more appropriate. Motion to adopt. Second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, please uh, call the roll on amendment number two. Ms. Ledbetter. Aye. Mr. Smith. 
Aye. Ms. Hummer. Aye. Mr. Volke. Aye. Ms. Fiedler. Aye. Ms. Radvian. Aye. And Ms. Pickard. Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Amendment number two has been adopted. Madam Secretary, please read amendment number three. Amendment number three. This amendment removes a representative of the county executive from the membership of the committee. Ms. Fiedler, this is also your amendment. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, looking at the membership list one through six, there is um, note for two representatives from the Office of Personnel and the county attorney or a representative. Uh, the general representative of the county executive could be anyone from, um, I don't know, the, the county executive himself, I, I would imagine, could uh, sit in. So I just felt we have a, enough of the executive branch, no offense, um, motion to adopt. Second. Is there any discussion on amendment number three? I think the original uh, intent, which I still support, is uh, there are um, other agencies not listed that we may value their input, um, such as the, um, I'm going to get the title wrong, the Office of Equal <laughs> Opportunity Employment. Um, so that was the, the thought behind it, I realize. Um, uh, it it didn't, doesn't say that explicitly, but for that reason, uh, um, I'm a no on this amendment. Is there any discussion on amendment number three? Madam Secretary, please call the roll on amendment number three. Ms. Ledbetter. Aye. Mr. Smith. I'm aye on this one. Uh, I'm sorry. Aye. I didn't. Yes. Aye. Ms. Hummer. Um, aye. Mr. Volke. Aye. Ms. Fiedler. Aye. Ms. Radvian. Nay. And Ms. Pickard. Nay. Five in the affirmative, two in the negative. Amendment number three has been adopted. Madam Secretary, please read amendment number four. Amendment number four. This amendment modifies one of the duties of the committee. Ms. Fiedler, this is also your amendment. Thank you, Madam Chair. This amendment um, references the existing office manu manual, and instead of creating a separate employee relations um, book or, or document, this amendment would put the employee relations section in the existing manual that we all have. Ma uh, motion to adopt. Second. Is there any discussion on amendment number four? Ms. Radvian. Thank you. I just want to make sure as I read this, to me it sounds like this, in, a, in addition to putting that in the um, the office manual, it also sounds like we could be opening up discussion for the entire office manual, and I don't know that that's what we intend to do here. I, I don't. Um, I'm sort of neutral on this amendment. I feel like we have we have documents that sort of talk about the tasks that that we do and the nature of we have that binder in our offices, and it's now um, online. Uh, or in our shared drives, um, it is different than an employee relations manual. So whether it, whether we combine them into one large document is, uh, I could go either way. Um, I think employer, uh, we are remiss in that we don't have a county council legislative branch specific employee relations manual, and that was the main focus of um, this one of the main tenets of this ad hoc committee. So. Um, I think it can it could go either way here. It's sort of a I'm a no. I'm going to change my uh, what did I say? I was neutral. <laughs> I can't be neutral. I have to vote. So I, I I'm a no on this one. I just like it the way it was written originally. Any other thoughts, Ms. Radvian? I just want to make sure that the way I explained my concern was clear. Do, does do folks understand that what I'm saying is that this significantly broadens? by saying we're going to review the current Anne Arundel County Council Office Manual, that significantly broadens the scope of what this ad hoc um, committee would be doing. You are correct. It would, it would take on the, the current document we have. It would, you're right, it would. It would open up that to a committee, committee work, which is much more which is not necessary. And the focus is, per, is really Correct. personnel. Correct. 
You're correct. Ms. <laughs> Ms. Fiedler. Once in a while. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. I think what the ad hoc committee is, um, their responsibilities or tasks at hand could mean an update to the um, handbook that we all have. So that was the reason for putting them all in one, um, because I think we will probably need a review of that document as well. Mr. Smith. Madam Chair, thank you. I mean, I'll tell you my interpretation of that was it was it was going to be a component added to it, not necessarily the overall review. That, that was just my understanding of it. But whether it's a separate document or a document created and inserted into this binder, I'm not going to lose any sleep on whether it's either. Because, I, But I don't think it is a uh, conduit to uh, expand the role of the committee to do the additional things in the office, in, in the regular manual. Or, let me bring it back up here. I think in the employee manual or the uh, office manual. I don't think my interpretation was that it was not additional duties to expand the office manual. But either way, it, I'm not going to lose sleep on where it goes. Well, thank you. The intent of the resolution as drafted was to focus an ad hoc committee on creating an employee relations manual. It was not meant to then also, and it doesn't, I don't think listed here, there may be other recommendations, but I don't think uh, those were geared towards changing that, um, our office manual um, in that regard. That's a totally different um, document. Ms. Hummer. Yes, I think I understand the intent of the sponsor on there, but uh, now that we've started the discussion, I agree that it's a little confusing um, as to what that would be. And so I'm going to be a nay and stick with the original language to better the intent. But I think it's more the wording for me than it is the end. It's not the intent of the, of the thing, of the amendment, but simply the wording of it. Is there any further discussion on amendment number five? Or four. Madam Secretary, please call the roll on amendment number four. Ms. Ledbetter. Aye. Mr. Smith. Nay. Ms. Hummer. Nay. Mr. Volke. Aye. Ms. Fiedler. Aye. Ms. Rodvian. Nay. And Ms. Pickard. Nay. Three in the affirmative, four in the negative. Amendment number four has been defeated. Madam Secretary, please read amendment number five. Amendment number five. This amendment changes the deadline for the final report of the committee. Ms. Fiedler, this is your amendment. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, looking at the timeline for this bill to have, or this ad hoc committee to have a report, um, I thought that December 31st, 2024 was a, a short time frame considering all that is before the council in the next few months um, and having newly appointed uh, staff. So giving one full year for members um, who will sit on the ad hoc committee to understand the office operations and be able to give um, a year's worth of information to the group I thought would be beneficial. I'm also not married to December 31st of 2025, um, but just some added time is preferential. Motion to adopt. Ms. Hummer. Um, yes, I've had a, a brief discussion with the sponsor on this earlier that I don't necessarily, necessarily with giving some more time, but I feel like the December 2025 date is too far out, especially because we recently posted a change to the rules which would create the, an annual evaluation for employees, and that's part of what this committee would be weighing in on, and I think we want to do that sooner. So I am going to be a no on this one, but I am open to a to discussion of finding kind of a middle ground um, for an additional amendment. Ms. Fiedler. Thank you, Matt. Oh, I do have it on. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Will an amendment be coming this evening? Are we intending to pass the bill or the resolution this evening? I do not have an amendment ready. I mean, I do not have one ready. Um, I know that with the resolution we can pass tonight, but if we could hold until the next meeting and maybe we can work together to come up with a date. Okay. If that would be possible. 
uh, or yeah. not hold. I mean, we don't have to vote on it tonight, or do we have to vote on it tonight? That's a. We do not have question. to vote on this amendment tonight. Okay. However, we we could get the 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 ad hoc committee going, and the ad hoc committee could come back to us and re request a longer time frame if they need it. Um, so, I, I do think December thirty first, twenty twenty five, is 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 a bit too out into the future for the work that we need to accomplish. Um, I would prefer um, keeping the amendment as drafted and having the, the committee um, let us know um, as they get close to December 31st, 2024, if they're going to need an extension. Mr. Smith. I actually agree with you. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Volke. Question, who's going to appoint the committee? Because I don't see, I see who's supposed to be on it, and I see what they're supposed to do, and I see when they're supposed to be done, and I see all of that, but I can't tell who's actually appointing the committee. Like, how is that going to happen? What's the mechanism for that? The council's going to commit. So this is going to be a separate resolution that says now that we've created this ad hoc committee, these are the members who are going to be on there? Correct. Okay, got you. Ms. Fiedler. Oh. I think, uh, um, Madam Council, I think I may be missing one amendment from later this afternoon. Are we going to hold? Okay, motion to hold. Your amendment's been moved and seconded, so point of oh, order, you would have to either withdraw that to then be able to take that motion that you want to take. Can, I will not be taking a motion at this very moment. Since can we, we just have. vote on this? Yes. Can we vote on the amendment? Sure, if you want. Madam Secretary, please call the roll on amendment number five. Uh, Ms. Ledbetter. Nay. Mr. Smith. Nay. Ms. Hummer. Nay. Mr. Volke. Nay. Ms. Fiedler. Aye. Ms. Rodvian. Nay. And Ms. Pickard. Nay. One in the affirmative, six in the negative. Amendment number five has been defeated. Madam Chair. Ms. Fiedler. Motion to hold the vote on resolution 824 until our meeting on April 1st. Second. Madam Secretary, please call the roll on the motion to hold the vote on resolution 8-24 until our next meeting, April 1st, 2024. Ms. Ledbetter. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Ms. Hummer. Aye. Mr. Volke. Aye. Ms. Fiedler. Aye. Ms. Radvian. Aye. And Ms. Pickard. Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Resolution number 824 has, I'm sorry, um, the motion to hold the vote on resolution number 824 has been adopted. Okay, we are now going to entertain bill number 1-24. Um, that was a while ago in this meeting, so we had held the public hearing. We held the public hearing. We cl closed the public hearing. Now we're looking at amendments. So, Ms. Hummer. Yes. <laughs> uh, Let's focus, Madam Chair, for a minute. We were talking about amendment number 12 when we tabled this vote. So now we're going back to amendment 12 or are we withdrawing? So can I say something first? <laughs> yes, talk? of course. Okay. So um, I thank all the people that have been so patient coming out here tonight. I also want to thank the administration that there were significant discussions going on for some time, including all through today. Um, as with any bill that comes up with animal welfare, it's very emotional. We all care very much for our animals, and we want to get this right. I think it's been very clear as we go through all this discussion that not everyone is going to be 100% happy with everything, anything that we pass. Um, there's some differing opinions on what we should do on things, and we're going to try to get as close to that as possible. But um, I think it became clear tonight, so that I have three amendments that were to be presented tonight, or was it four amendments? Um, 
four amendments. I still feel that there is merit to all of those amendments that would clarify different things about a condi conditions that animals could be reconsidered. Um, and it would include some um, determinative factors for when an animal could be found dangerous, potentially dangerous, vicious. Um, it would um, also clarify some other um, issues around the findings for those. However, I think it's also clear tonight that there's still, um, that the interested parties really want to have some more discussion on this before we pass these things. So having heard from everyone, I'm, I am going to withdraw amendments 12 through 15, and I'm putting forth an amendment that would remove the sections um, regarding the vicious, dangerous, potentially dangerous designations, and it would split the bill so that what will be left will be the sections that refer to redemption fees um, and cruelty um, issues around dogs. And we can pass that. I, hopefully, I will have the support of my colleagues that we can pass that amendment tonight. And the other section we will return and continue to work on to make sure we get it right and that we're not rushing to get something through and make a mistake. Um, in extensive discussions today with, le with le legislative council and the administration and things, it's very, and in our previous meetings, it's very clear that one word can really change, um, can change the meaning of an amendment. And we don't want to make a mistake um, to have this. So I would move um, that we consider amendment number 16. And I also, as I said, I want to thank the administration and the many people in the community who have come out on this and worked with it, and Ms. Ledbetter, who's worked extensively on this as well. And I, I think I can confidently say that we will be continuing to work together with everyone to try to get this into the right place. So at this time, I would like to make a motion for amendment number 16. Is that how I do it? Am I doing it wrong? <laughs> Mr. Volk, Mr. Tell Volk me how is here I'm to doing. tell us when we do things tell, wrong. He doesn't tell, tell us when do, we're doing anything Volk. right, but. Wow. <laughs> so point of information, Madam Secretary, was there a second on amendment 12? We didn't have a motion. We didn't have a second on any of those, so we can withdraw amendments 12 through 15. I do have amendment 16 in my hand. Okay. And so we need to go back to the part where we... I re I'll read it. I'll yes. have Madam Secretary read in amendment number 16. Yes, and we do have some copies. I have provided some to uh, Ms. Kelly and Mr. Hunt. I have a few extra copies here if anybody in the audience needs to see one of these as well. Madam Secretary, please read amendment number 16. Amendment number 16. This amendment removes provisions defining potentially dangerous, dangerous, and vicious animals. Oh, did I say? Did I have two amendment 16s? Yes. And they're different? You did um, the description on the first correct description. Okay, that was just read. Okay. That was just read. Okay. Ms. Hummer, this is your amendment. You have the floor. Yes, as I said, I, um, I'm putting forth this bill so that we can continue to work together to um, come up with the best possible um, bill, but this will make sure that certain provisions can go forward more um, in a more timely fashion while we work out some of the other details. So I um, ask for my colleagues' support and I move to adopt this, am this amendment. Rod in second. Would the administration like to uh, weigh in on this amendment number 16? Um, yes, Madam Chair. Um, I understand this may be the will of some council members, but I do want to express that we're disappointed it's gotten to this point because there's a lot of good things in this bill. I thought the amendments that were being offered were good and make this better. Um, but I do want to be clear that the county executive has always believed um, from the start that with the introduction of this bill, it was expressing the need to clarify the evidentiary burdens for determining dogs um, as dangerous or vicious, as well as clearly articulating that hearsay evidence would never be sufficient alone to euthanize a dog. And we thought this bill struck the right balance between protecting public safety and protecting the owners 
of dogs who are accused of attacking other animals. Um, by striking all this language, we are undoing all of that. And so um, it's, it's disappointing that we've gotten to this point because lots of people have put in a lot of work over the last several months to get us to this point. Ms. Radvian. Thank you. I, I can't speak for all my colleagues, but I did get the impression that there was intent to um, bring back all the parts of the bill where there had been general agreement as a new bill and then try and work out some of these last um, areas of, um, you know, concern. Ms. Ledbetter. I, I just wanted to concur with what Ms. Radvian just said. <laughs> uh, I'm definitely on board with that plan. Mr. Volke. I concur too. And I want to say this. While I'm certain that it's disappointing because there has been a lot of work from a lot of people, I also think that everyone in this room would rather see us get the bill right than have to come back and fix it or see bad outcomes under a bad bill that doesn't make sense that then we are struggling to understand what it means. So uh, I tend to err on the side of if it's not right, let's take some time, let's get it right and go back. This seems to be a way to take the parts that are generally agreed upon, pass them, and then continue moving forward. So while I can recognize the disappointment from some, I would hope that people would recognize that this is probably serving a better good to do it this way. So I just would add those comments because disappointment understood, but let's get it right when we're doing it. Mr. Smith. Um, obviously, I think everyone is, in, and I even conveyed that you know, I've been flexible with this with this bill over the last uh, few months. Um, so, I mean, obviously, there's no public testimony right here, and we didn't get we, we heard some of the uh, comments earlier. Um, I'm not an expert at animals, right? I'm I'm just not, and so if 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 more time is needed, I'm okay with it. Ms. Fiedler, thank you, Madam Chair. I would just say that I concur with my colleagues. I think uh, we're down to a timing issue, and this is such a sensitive area of our code um, that if we did not split the bill like this amendment does um, come next council meeting, I would not be able to support the bill. So I think in the end, you'll end up with a bill that passes that still reaches the goal, um, but we're just not there yet. Yeah, I appreciate the, the the work on this. I will, for, for those listening at home and for those in the audience, this bill expires on April 6th. So technically this is the last uh, meeting that we can amend the bill. So with this amendment, if this amendment passes, the bill will come back for a final vote at our next meeting. We would not have time to bring back additional amendments uh, as some of our testimony, our, our folks that testified uh, this evening on the, the four amendments that were, inter that were potentially being introduced tonight. Um, um, that section of this bill and our code need a little more work. So we'll pass uh, this amendment tonight, it sounds like, and this bill will be, um, the parts of this bill that, that have um, a majority consensus will pass on most likely April 1st, and then we'll work on the section that still needs some work. Mr. Smith. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just saying to the uh, supporters or watchers of this bill who came here to testify today, uh, and there was a specific order. Uh, thank you all for staying to the end to see how this evolves. So that's it. Madam Secretary, um, this amendment has been moved and seconded, correct? <laughs> thank you. I'm losing track. Uh, please call the roll on amendment number 16. Uh, Ms. Ledbetter. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Ms. Hummer. Aye. Mr. Volke. Aye. Ms. Fiedler. Aye. Ms. Rodvian. Aye. And Ms. Pickard. Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Amendment number 16 has been adopted. Bill number 1-24 will come back as amended on April 1st, 2024. Uh, I've lost my script. I think we're done. Madam Chair. Yes, Ms. Fiedler. I think now is the appropriate time to make any final comments. Are we at that part of the final comments of what? Just general comments. Yeah. I just wanted to commend Ms. Beach for putting together an amendment. Oh. 
that, I was like, that quickly. <laughs> you have the floor, Ms. Fiedler. Thank yes. you. I just wanted to commend Ms. Beach. Um, I don't think she has more than six meetings, probably less. Second. <laughs> and put together a, an amendment on the fly. So, well done. Oh, goodness. I was like, huh? You're throwing me off, Ms. Fiedler. All right. Is there any uh, other business to be brought before the county council at this time? Mr. Volk. So, so moved. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Brad being second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. The county council is adjourned until April 1st, 2024. Happy Women's History Month, everybody.